You guys are trying to expand your addressable market. You've moved deeper into CRM, uh, all kinds of areas where you're going to run into competition from more competition from Salesforce, <laughs> Adobe, uh, et, et cetera. Uh, how do you get the confidence that you're not going to hit a wall there for talent, market share? <laughs> well, first and foremost, it, it has been an amazing year, like we report earnings, uh, we are gr still growing 40% year over year at a $700 million run rate. Uh, employees love it, market loves it, customers love it, investors love it. Um, and like, yeah, there will be more and more competition. And we love competition, we think it's great. Customers, they love competition, they love uh, innovation, they love to see what uh, all these different vendors can do for them in kind of innovating and bringing, uh, bringing uh, more innovation to the world of customer experience and customer service. Can you get the people in the door quickly enough? And can you integrate all of this new software fast enough? Because customers, you know, as positive as the reviews are on your product, some are saying, boy, we have to deal with this integration some on our own, and, and we'd like for Zendesk to do more of it. Yeah, but we, um, we, we think about ourselves as a next generation uh, SaaS business software company where, where integration, where configuration, all these things are much easier than it used to be. That also means that we can get our customers up and running very, very quickly. They can be up and running in weeks where normally it took like years to get customers to come up, to work up. And our new uh, CRM platform that is all built on AWS, an open standards based cloud platform, really enables them to do all of these things much, much much faster in an environment that, that, that they're already using, that the developers are using and love, and we think it's, it's competitively very, very strong and our customers are loving it. A lot of viewers who run startups especially might wonder, is the, is the dynamic changing regarding the pressure to turn a profit on a gap basis? Do people want it more or are they more forgiving? Well, we definitely want to show the market that, that we can, and so we're constantly improving our margins, and I think that's what our investors expect from us. So constantly improving margins as we continue to, as we did this year, accelerate our growth. I think the markets want that and are, and are asking for that. So it's more about directional movement, not necessarily the absolute number. Well, 40% growth on revenues while you improve the margins, like people like that. All right. Talk about geography. Um, it, it used to be software as a service was somewhat novel. You saw quicker pickup perhaps in North America, for example. Where are you seeing uh, velocity that perhaps you weren't uh, four or five years ago? Yeah, we are a global market and we see global trends and we have half a business outside of the U.S. Uh, so we feel very confident about the global potential. And we like the U.S. is definitely like a market leader. This is where we see all the innovation. This is where we see first movers. Um, and for example, the big direct to consumer trend that is really, really dominating businesses today where they have to go directly to consumer, where they want to own the direct customer relationship, they want to provide that direct customer experience, get all the interesting data to provide better products. It definitely starts here in the US, but we see that it's a worldwide trend that everybody is following. And we're in the midst of that and feel fantastic about the opportunity there. We put up a board of your, uh, some of your top customers. A lot of them are in the sort of the same milieu, uh, Uber and Peloton and Birchbox, and then there's Stanley Black and Decker. <laughs> How do they fit? No, but like I think like Stanley Black and Decker is a very good example of what we just talked about with the direct to consumer. Like all of these other companies like Dollar Shave Club, Peloton, they have kind of spearheaded the kind of direct to consumer movement. They're going directly to consumer, providing a direct customer experience. Stanley Black & Decker is a company that used to sell all their stuff through retailers, through outlets, through partners, and now they want to go direct to consumer, they want to own that relationship, they want to understand their customer better. So they're looking for technologies that enables them to do that and send us in that game. But we see that with like direct to consumers happening everywhere. You talked about Disney the other day, big, big play on direct to consumer. We see that in gaming, we see that in finance, we see that in news, we see that everywhere. And we're right in the middle of it and we're enjoying it very much.